Hi there, I'm Birgit O'Connor and welcome to the World of Watercolor Painting Podcast. I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We've got a wonderful artist, Tony White out of Tasmania. He's got a great story, he's down to earth, and he does beautiful paintings. We'll be talking a little bit about his creative journey and how he left a reliable job to follow his dream and become a successful watercolor artist. And I also think you're going to find it fascinating to see how he was working on a painting and his young daughter came in and decided to paint all over it. It was cerulean blue. He ended up lifting most of that color out, turned it into a beautiful landscape and sold it. We'll be talking about the materials that he uses. And he actually told me about a brush that I never thought of or used before. I'd also like to say hello to some of our listeners in South Africa, Kenya, Venezuela, China, Iran, and Finland. And if you're looking for more information, you can always visit my website at BeerGetOConnor.com. Now let's get started. Hi, Tony. Uh, it's so hello. nice to meet you. And um, so what we've got is Tony White here with us today. And so, Tony, why don't you tell us where, we're, where you're coming from? Um, I am here coming to you from Hobart in Tasmania, Australia, where I live now with my family only for uh, the last few months. So, yep. Where did you live before then? Um, in Newcastle, up in a different state on the mainland. So, um, for those geographically challenged out there, Tasmania is a little island off the bottom of Australia, and um, still, still Australia, but it's it's a it's a little island. But um, and I used to live on the mainland, up in halfway up, just above, just north of Sydney, um, and lived there my whole life. But the family and I moved down here because we love it down here, and uh, yeah, things are starting to gain momentum, and yeah, we love it. It's great. Well, your work is gorgeous and it's stunning and you have a lot of passion in there. So when I saw your work, absolutely, I was really interested. And um, actually, I'm thinking, let's just kind of take a look at, so just to give everybody a glimpse of what you have right now. And yeah. Uh, so we have, you know, I want to go over your brushes and all this, but let's just show them the kind of work that you do. And what I wanted to do is I, I want to hear, I don't want to hear your story about your paintings yet. I want yeah. to hear about you and how you got started. Uh, because I don't think you, have you been painting that long? Well, yes and no. Um, I started, I, I mean, I always drew as a kid. I drew pictures and, you know, it was never a fantastic like it wasn't a natural thing but I was probably you know a bit better than you know the kid next to me or something like that so I was I was never you know I could never render anything you know realistically or anything like that but it was always fun um, I could get things roughly right with perspective and shapes and stuff but that kind of parlayed into um watercolour painting when I was a teenager and a lady, uh, an elderly lady from the UK moved next door to us and became friends with my mum and she was a watercolourist and uh, she actually got me my first, this, how's this for an introduction, she got me my first set of watercolours and they were a set of Winsor & Newton artist grade paints with a proper enamel palette and everything so um, I didn't know how good I had it then just from starting out with that. So maybe that had, I had some good results and uh, maybe that had something to do with it. But, um, but yeah, painted with her for a long time. So she had a studio next to uh, her little place and um, I was in there all the time with her and we painted and she sort of taught me a fair bit. That was over a period of a couple of years, I think. Um, and I always played music as well, play guitar and sing and all that sort of stuff. And I still do to, to make money now, I still do gigs now. Wow. Um, that kind of, that sort of took over for a long time, probably 20 years or so. Um, and uh, probably it was, I got back into, I mean, I'd always sort of dabbled on and off with acrylics and oils and everything. And um, that was just, I was too impatient for, well, either of those really, too impatient, especially for oils. I didn't want to wait three weeks before I could do the next bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, just one of those things. Um, probably about seven or eight years or no maybe six or seven years ago I um 
just started, I got a set of watercolour pencils and I just started drawing and mucking around with them. And then I probably, it was only a matter of a week and I just went and, um, went all out and got materials and started painting again. And uh, oh, probably within, probably within six months or so, I sold a painting and that, like it was, I mean, if I was to look at that painting now, it's incredibly embarrassing. I think it's on my Facebook page somewhere from back in the day. But it's, um, and that sort of really spurred me on. So, and I've just been obsessed by it ever since. Um, I mean, I was back in, in the day, but this, yeah, it's, I live and breathe and dream about painting and <laughs> to the point where it's annoying. <laughs> but I it's know. I know it's like I'm driven, right? It's like a mission and it's all I think about and all I want to do and all I want to share. And I thought, you know, and like you, I see that you do teach also. I know for myself what it was is all I really wanted to do is just be in the studio painting and I never personally wanted to be out there. I was actually way too shy and uh, you would never know that now. And I would just always put myself down and I totally understand about about having a piece of paint or, or a painting that you're a, a kind of a little bit embarrassed about, but you know, just that really gave us that encouragement to continue. Yeah, and that's right. I, I think that if you, I mean, as, a, as an artist, if, you, if you're happy with your work, then I think as stupid and sort of um, self-loathing sort of thing as it sounds, if you're truly happy with a painting, then I, there's something wrong, I think. I think there's always... <laughs> That is perfect because, right? Do we ever think that it's ever great? No. You know? <laughs> so some come easier than others. Exactly. Absolutely. It's, it's usually those ones that we, uh, that just seem to flow out and you're done within uh, an hour and it's great and everything worked. They're, they're the ones that you just go, oh, well, that's, that's great. But, you, but if you go back and look at it the next day, then you'll still see something. Ah, oh, I wish that was better. But, um, but no, and I think that uh, that sort of motivated me to, I started attending workshops and um, with Alvaro Castanet, Amanda Hyatt, and mm -hmm. all the, the people that are, you know, idols to me, um, painting wise. And, um, and I, I just, I'd always taught guitar from like when I was a teenager and with that whole music side of things, I always, and I felt like I, was, I could communicate pretty well what I was after. And I knew what teaching style I liked um, as a student, I mean. Um, and I'd been to many workshops where that style just wasn't present. It was just run by old fuddy duddies who, you know, we, oh, there was one that I went to, I won't, won't mention the tutor's name. But um, well, I'm always curious, but that's okay. <laughs> no. and, and sure, absolutely, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, no, <laughs> but, uh, we won't talk about that. We'll be good. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. But no, like, and we got got into the room. Uh, he was late. Um, oh, not good. You know, everyone's everyone's paid for this. Obviously, we're all paying participants, and exactly. you know, he was late. Um, he had big TVs and cameras and all sorts of stuff to set up, and all he did is he had a, a shopping bag full of apples and he went and put an apple on our desk and said, draw that while I set up. Uh -huh. And yeah, well, I mean, cool, whatever, that's fine. But um, he taught us to draw by saying, what's the best? He, he gave us an exercise and it said, uh, what's the most accurate way you can get this little shape? There was a few little shapes. Um, and everyone was racking their brain going, well, yeah, you can do this, do your pencil, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. Um, but he said, no, go to a window and trace it. Oh, you know, yeah. It's like, it's just crazy. It's, um, but we, that entire, it was just a one day workshop. That entire day, none of the students picked up a paintbrush. Yes, I hear quite a bit of that, actually. You know, I want to interject here, too, because it really yes. depends on the, there's a couple, of course, uh, I like you have totally sparked my brain and all these things that I want to interject with you. But um, cool. th the first thing is, like, when I started out, I... My, I had one son and he was very young and I, I didn't know anything about watercolor. And what I wanted to do is I took an adult ed 
well, a college class, a, uh, an adult evening class, you know, and I go there and he put a teddy bear in a vacuum cleaner in the middle of the room and he said, paint it. And I thought, what do I do? What do I do with this? You know? And that was basically it. I'm not going to do that. You know, I just didn't have the time for it. Yep. And also about the tracing when like teaching workshops, depending on what you're doing, because like you can see my paintings behind me yep. and to break them down into a simplistic form, instead of them getting so caught up in all that detail, I need to have a tracing ready for them. And yes. so, you know, we keep that going. And I could also see Alvaro's work. I could see your, his influence in your work and and it yeah. is stunning how you have translated it. You know, you've done an outstanding job. So, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Look, the, the tracing, just to clarify, um, this fellow that, uh, with the, that was the tracing teacher, <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him the tracing teacher, he's, ironically, he's an architect. He made his yeah. living and his life being an architect. And so, you know, he could have taught us how to actually draw it. However, um, that would have been fine if there was a point to point to it, but we never went anywhere with it. So at the time when we did the tracing, it was like, oh, yeah, of course. But it never went back to it. It was just a frivolous exercise. And all we did for the rest of the day is watch him paint via his camera. He didn't want us around looking closely at his stuff. And he spoke about his, his little um palettes that he has made up and he wants to sell he was just trying to sell his stuff right. that's another thing that happens a lot of times in workshops they're always trying to sell their actual originals their prints or their products like i'll have brushes but it's like if you want them they're there and right. you know it is I, my focus is not to sell originals when i'm there because really it's about the student learning how to paint yeah, so yeah, I totally, I'm right with you on all that. Yeah, and it's it's just a shame because I mean, there's so much, so many better ways you can teach, and that's and that's what I sort of had in my own sort of mind that way that I wanted to. And someone actually in a workshop that I did, and a fellow student said, "You should do a workshop here, like because they they obviously saw that I could paint in a way and and I was a good communicator, and so I did. It was just my local art society." And um, we organised a workshop, and I couldn't believe it. It was it was um, it was full and well attended and well received. I'm pretty casual, and I think people like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting old to the point where everything hurts, but I'm, I'm younger. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when it hurts, it hurts to get off the couch. It's, it's a bit. I was just thinking that last night. <laughs> I got so settled that I thought, how do I do that? But you know, you said something right there too, is that I think a lot of instructors are, they, they come across as aloof. Obviously not all of them, but quite a few of them. And like, I remember doing um, like a convention and a lot of the instructors were just trying to one up each other on how fantastic they were. And I couldn't, I wanted to hang out with the students, you know, that, that's yeah. what the stories are, you know, yeah. they're, they're yeah. so interesting and, and, yeah. you know, yeah. And that's, that's exactly right. There seems to be a lot of, oh, I don't know, it's kind of like a little game that they all play with each other. There's little clicky groups of tutors and stuff and it's just like, eh, I don't want any of that. I just want to go in and make my students happy and glad they came and paid their money. You know, I respect the fact that there's, hard-earned cash being thrown to attend a workshop done by me. And I never take that for granted. I think a lot of them sort of seem to take it for granted. I guess once you've been doing it for 20, 25, 40 years or whatever, then, you know, it can happen. But I've been teaching for a very long time now. I mean, I, I was only doing galleries for quite a while and I got tired of being isolated in the galleries. And I mean, here it was kind of a mixed bag thinking, I just wanted to stay in the studio. That's all I wanted to do. But then I didn't want to just listen to what the gallery had to say. And I, and by teaching, like traveling and teaching the way that I was, like I know you travel too, which is awesome. You have so many wonderful experiences that happen, but I felt that uh, I couldn't grow the way I wanted to grow because in order for, like, I didn't realize that people, I didn't think my work was any big deal. So just like what you were talking about and, yeah, yeah. and then I had something to share with them and, but then to break it down in a way that the students could understand, I had yeah. to break it into such a simplistic form that I wasn't able to grow, you know? Yeah. 
That's right. And that's, I've just put a, um, a little, it's about eight minutes long, a little video up on YouTube just yesterday, actually, um, about a workshop that I held in Brisbane a few weeks ago, um, a couple of weekends ago. And it was a three day workshop, but I sort of went through a couple of the paintings that, that I've, you know, as a teacher, you get to the point where you're going, you're, you're repeating things, but you find your, your subjects that are the, the best subjects for teaching what you're trying to teach. Exactly. And, and that's why you go back to things all the time. And I've never understood the whole, um, I mean, plein air workshops are, are great, but I, I, I don't, I just, I don't want to go to a workshop as a student and just have, have them stand there and paint their vision in front of me. And that's it. Like, and that's, that's fine. But they've, like you've got to, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a bit more to it, a bit more substance, and 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 that sometimes that just means repeating things, you know. And like I've got, you know, twenty different versions of the same scene. But I guess the beauty of watercolor is that it's going to be different every time. So do you, when you teach, are you teaching them in the studio, or are you uh, like in a facility like that, or are you teaching um, them outside? Both, a bit okay. of both. Um, a lot of the time. Um, the way it's just panned out recently anyway in the last couple of years has been most of the time it's been in a studio in a, an actual facility um but there's i always do things in that instance if we can't get outside it's too hot or too cold or anything like that too windy the weather plays havoc obviously um i always go I always go for walks outside class and take photos of things that would be a good subject um to, to for and then translate that into things. So it'll be the first time I'm painting it, but this is how I'm doing it. So I'm, you know, simplifying complex things into big shape and all that. So you still get that way of looking at things when you're teaching plein air and when you're painting plein air. Um, but you obviously in the studio, you can still do it. Like it's a bit of both. But I, I like the studio because it's controlled and right. you know, I know that where the light is and I know that there's, if there's a if there's something shining on my page and I can't see anything because it's all shining back at me and, and I'm doing all these funky moves trying to see where everything is, um, I can just control things a bit better. Well, you know, um, I try. Well, I've have done a few outside. Mostly, I'm a studio. Uh, instructor but yeah. when i'm outside uh I, I i can easily get distracted you know i'm, I'm like a little dog looking at a squirrel oh squirrel you know yeah. And, yeah. That's right. when i let the students out like like we would do a little planner painting or some uh, travel sketching and really honestly when i think about the travel sketching to me that just doesn't seem that difficult you know you're just kind of yeah doodling kind of and, right. yeah. then. and so I thought oh that's a super easy thing maybe have people come out here the problem yeah. I run into like if I, I, it doesn't matter where it is if it's in the wine country or if it's on the coast once yeah. I have those students it's like I, it's herding cats you know you tell them please don't go out into the vineyards and yeah. don't touch the grapes and they're yeah. out there going and isn't this delicious and then we're getting kicked out of the field or yeah. they're getting so close to the cliff that I'm thinking, oh, yeah. my God, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So. No, and you're absolutely right. And I think it's just having that bit of control. Like if you, if you take it, I mean, there's a difference, I guess, between just a, like a one-day workshop or, and it's because I did one earlier in the year. It was on Sydney Harbour and it was just a, a plain air day and it was specific, specifically plain air day. And we were on the harbour. It was great. We did a couple of paintings and – but – you know, we're on a path in a, in a park and there's people just, you know, it's just one of those things. It's, it's distracting, but, um, but, uh, so it's not the best for, for teaching. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'll do it anywhere. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll come and teach in your toilet. doesn't matter. <laughs> well, you know I mean, what? I, I love your studio there. You know, you <laughs> have got the best studio. What do I see back there? You've got your crib and you've got teddy bears and things like that. Yeah. I haven't grown out of it. Oh, yeah. so sweet. So yeah, I know. And uh, I, this is where I'm relegated to, to at the moment, which is the uh, a corner of a baby's room. It's a pretty big room, but he um he gets in here and he he's he's about 15 months old, but he gets in here and he gets my brushes and he's 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 come out. Of, it's my own fault for leaving them open, but he's come out there and his hands have got you know 120 dollars worth of paint all over them. Here he is, almost. There it is. That's 
That's my daughter. That's Sydney. She, uh, she's almost four. And yeah, she does the same thing. So I was quite happy with the, um, with the washers in the initial, I was going to make that water really bright. And, uh, and uh, sure enough, she came in and it had to be cobalt blue that she had as well. So incredibly difficult to scrub out. But I managed to, if you go to this, the painting above it or the picture above it. This one here? That, yeah, that's it. That's oh that my paint. gosh. That's the same thing. That is crazy. And if you, and if you look closely, oh you can see gosh. the big blotch. See that big oh blotch there? Oh my gosh. That so is amazing. I had no idea that that was going to work. But I, what I did, because I got it while it was wet, obviously, because I saw her when she was doing it. But um, oh I my gosh. It. Just saturated it, just completely saturated it, scrubbed oh it. Up a that, brush. that is truly amazing yeah. to see that, uh, that yeah. right there, and that happy smile. Oh my she, gosh. She knows, she knows she's been naughty, so she loves it. She's happy. <laughs> oh, I love uh, this. It's good. That, see, I don't, I don't really care about stuff like that. I mean, that's happened. She's done that before where she's. Yeah, completely ruined things, but doesn't matter. This has got a cool story to it now, and um, great yeah. story. And a lady bought it, I think, the next day or something. As soon as I posted the finished picture, she's like, oh, "I've got to have it." So, well, that's um, amazing. Let's yeah, let's let's go ahead, and um, I I have a feeling this is not going to be our only conversation. Oh, so cool. I I I would like to call you my friend and be able to catch up with you at any time, and you Absolutely. know. I, I like your energy. You know what I mean? Oh, I like you. I like that. Uh, good. Ditto. Absolutely. Let's look at your materials first. You were in artist, uh, Australian Artist Magazine. Mm -hmm. That was my first article with them. Yeah, that was in, I think, January of this year. Yeah. I was in Australian Artist Magazine at the turn of the century. <laughs> uh, which, which century? Then? <laughs> well, was yeah. it from, from the 19... At the 19th, 19th and <laughs> I can't believe I get to say that at the turn of the century. No, it's weird, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, I saw it in a new century. I know, it's so weird. Okay, so then here we've got uh, these brushes. So you yeah. use these a lot? I do, actually. That um, The Art Basics brush, the dagger in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to me leaving it, in water, it now looks like this. Oh, it's wait, wait hold it up a little bit higher. Ah, there it is. It's bare wood. Bear, oh, oh. Bare wood. oh, I didn't all see the, that. All the paint's gone, but it's still oh. lovely. I still use it all the time. <laughs> and, uh, we have a fondness for our brushes. I thought you, I was looking at the tip. So yeah, no, yeah. that's sad. It's such a pretty blue. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> That's right. So I, essentially, I use, I guess uh, it's a mixture of um, synthetics and natural hairs. Um, nice. Natural hairs, I think, are, are essential for nice washes and smooth, smooth gradations. Um, but I, I can't, I can't get too much detail with them. Even the pointy, normal no. round, round sables, I, I just don't. Like I kind of tend to destroy them because they frustrate me a bit. Um, right. But but that one, the the number sixteen there um, is that's a Kalinsky uh, red sable. Yep. It's a red sable, and it's it's great. It does so much work. I just sort of use that for like if you if you're talking pa painting in stages, you've got your wash, your next wash, and your details. You know, as a general rule, if I'd, I'd sort of use it in that middle step there. Uh, but I would always, and I always, it's just a habit I, I've developed, I always have a pointy synthetic brush, like the one on the right, pointy synthetic brush loaded up with the same pigment so I can, you know, do little... Yeah, you get yeah. the detail in there. And this looks like a fantastic brush, your sword brush, your dagger, and that one too. And it's interesting, it's a number 16. Do you have other um, sizes in this or do you primarily stay with that 16? Um, I've got a 16 and I've got a 12 in that as well. Um, the 12 doesn't get used as much. I generally go on to bigger brushes. I, I err on the side of bigger brushes as a general rule. Do you use the sable synthetic blends too or just... Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. My favorite 
which is in the water. Tip down? Do you have your brushes tipped down? Yeah, I'm stupid. I did. I didn't say that. I didn't uh, say that. that that's well, not well, what I'm about. I say that's. You didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't even imply that. No, it was like no, no. no, no. <laughs> now I know what it is, and I guess it all comes back to my style of painting and the fact that I love watercolor. Is I'm probably a fairly lazy person. Hey, um, hey, no, no, I, I would not say that at all because you're talking to somebody who's probably very compatible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And so this is my favorite. Um, let's see what I can see. It's a, it's a synthetic, I think it's um, pony hair. Oh. Uh, synthetic pony blend. It's just a, a cheap calligraphy. It's got a bamboo handle. And they're about 20 bucks or something like that. Um, and it's got no writing on it anymore. It's all gone, but it's just from a cheap shop. But it does really, if you watch any of my YouTube videos, this is all over. Um, but point-wise, it comes to... I've never tried that one. Yeah, they're, they're great. And that's the, that's the point that you get out of them. Like they're really good. Hmm. They're really nice. How um, neat here, huh? That's yeah. it was like a pony blend of something. It's only, it's only cheap, so it won't be, um, you know, it's not squirrel or anything, but it's it's soft, but you can still, it's still got a bit of spring. So. And the paper that you use, what is the brand? That brand is an Australian brand, Art Spectrum. They do some really good stuff. Um, that paper I use for sketches and things like that. Um, predominantly my paper is, well, uh, I'd say probably 100% of the time when I'm doing uh, proper paintings or such uh, would be Saunders Waterford. Oh, you like, yeah, I, because like arches, a lot of people have had problems with it, myself included. Yeah. And yeah. then a lot of people are going to Saunders. And so yeah. I have not experienced that yet. So you like That's it. That's right. So, yeah, I do. I, I love it. And I, I started off with arches. So I'm a big believer in... Um, in paper being the most important part of your equipment as far as spending money because um, mm -hmm. no no art materials are expensive they really are um but paper is something you should never skimp on in my view um because it just doesn't give you the same results you could have rubbish um rubbish paints rubbish brushes but good paper and you'll get a result the paper will you'll have a watercolor but if you do it in reverse, you know, you've got great brushes, great paints. People tend to spend so much money on those things and then neglect the paper because it's just the surface. This is what no right. paper. It's just rubbish. Like the, a, lot of, a lot of stuff with unnatural sizing, you've got things that are synthetic size. They feel waxy to paint on. Mm -hmm. and yeah, all, yeah, just don't, don't get cheap paper. Get, get good paper. Arches is great. Um, but they're it's very expensive. expensive now. They've like they're seriously for one sheet. It's about twenty bucks here now. Right. So what I just did here is I um I just created a desert class, which I'm doing uh, is happening right now. And what I tried to do is make it more wider, you know, to where they could use different types of paper and different pads. And but the you know trying to like even Fluid 100 and other brands, but to get that color intensity, no. But it's fantastic. I mean. Anyway, just wanted to touch on that, but it is interesting to hear you about the Saunders paper. Now, mm -hmm. let's take a look here. I want to take a peek at, uh, because going through your Instagram page, I yes. was looking at all this. So, um, there are two thoughts here. Now, what is it's, your website? Uh, uh, it's just TonyWhiteWaterColor.com. Only just updated it not that long ago, so it all should be fairly relevant on that. Okay. Um, but yeah, TonyWhiteWaterColor.com. What were you doing before you became an artist here? Um, okay, uh, I worked in a bank for oh. 10 years, um, almost to the day, 10 years. I was a bit, a bit longer than 10 years. But um, yeah, from 2008 to last year, I worked in a bank. I, I've been, I quit my job uh, to do this full time. And... Um, still married. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, still married? Because I'm thinking after you quit your job, was it? I mean, that's got to be stressful. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And it, it has been like, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a very stressful thing because the stability of your, of your paycheck every couple of weeks is, is what we all is 99% of the population across the world strive for and want, and that's fine. And that's good. That's a good thing. All, all power to you if that gets you through. But I just, I think life's too short. You've got to try things and, you know. Tony, I think that you're going to do beautifully with what you're doing. You have a beautiful technique. And I think that we can also talk as far as more marketing and uh, all that. And I'd like to uh, keep connected with you. Yeah, so, absolutely. absolutely. So uh, be- let's make your wife happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. She, um, yeah, that's, that, that's the goal at the moment. But I'm, I'm going all right. Like as far as um, yeah, I did ten years in the bank, and I was playing music and like gigging every week or two or whatever, uh, which um, which is all fine. But this is really what I wanted to do. And essentially, it was on September fifth last year was my last day, and on September sixth I spent literally all day in front of the computer, just Googling art workshops the world over, going to their websites, getting any email address I could find, just doing a massive, I think I sent 200 odd emails out that day um, with a little bio saying, hi, this is me, I've been teaching, here we go, here's my work, um, with YouTube links, Facebook links and all that. And I started booking workshops from there. Um, And it worked. Go, I wanna look at your website here. So people can see it's Tony Whitewater watercolor. Wonderful. And you've got yep. your um, beautiful, beautiful work, beautiful work. And you've got your gallery here. So people can go ahead and take a look at that. I've got to change this template on, on this page because it's, it's cumbersome when I went back I into understand. it. I understand. I totally get it. You know, but at least they can find you here. That's what's important. That's Okay, and then let's take a look at uh, your palette. Oops, I'm going to go over here. Everything moves around on me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is this an, uh, your average palette? Uh, yeah, mostly. It's changed a slightly since I've started using schminky colors. Oh, um, I love schminky, yeah. In the last, yeah. They've always been my favorite, and I'm lucky enough to be working pretty closely with them at the moment. Which is nice. Um, and uh, as far as color wise the if the majority is there um so the lavender is the only thing that schminky don't do at the moment um mm-hmm. they're talking about at some stage perhaps doing a set for me and i'm hope we've been talking to them about developing an opaque lavender color which is like this the holbein one that i, I use the holbein lavender um, it mixes really well. It's just beautiful. I can't do without that on my palette. So that's the only one that's not a schminky. But if I was to go through and name the schminky colours that I'm using now, which I will, oops, sorry about that. Um, neutral tint I use, absolutely. I've always used a schminky neutral tint because it's not dead. Um, right, neutral- dead, right. Yeah. That's interesting, of, okay. Yeah, a lot of neutral tints are just black and uh-huh. they've, got, they've all got black in them, but they're just... I mean, the, a lot of them are just, yeah, it's just like using dead black paint. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of cool, sort of on the way of pur- like a cool purpley tinge to it. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, burnt Sienna, uh, the yellow ochre, I'm not really using much these days. Um, mm-hmm. I'm using uh, transparent orange. Uh, Schminky's probably their famous colour. Uh, right, I've heard. Orange. Mm-hmm. Um, Using that, and I'm using Turner's yellow, which is like a chrome, chrome yellow, um, and alizarin crimson. I'm using a color of theirs that's not fugitive called Bordeaux. The purpose that I I wanted to get to for, I mean, alizarin, I only ever used as a mixing color anyway. It was never really something that I would just use, um, which are most are, I guess. But things like the pyrrole red, which the um, the uh, Schminky version is their um, scarlet red. Oh, okay. Uh, that's the same pigment in there. That's beautiful because it stays red. You can do like straight out of the tube all the time. Bang, just little red highlights and dots here and there. Um, that stays red. Cadmium red I used to use all the time, but it seems it fades off a lot. As soon as it's dry, it fades. Mm. So kind of dead. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's just lifeless, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Ultramarine is a staple. Cobalt's a staple. Um, Tasman blue was an art spectrum colour, which is kind of like a slightly nicer version of cerulean. I've never uh, seen that. Is, is that a schminky colour? No, that's a, an art spectrum colour that Australian oh, okay. brands are looking at. Okay. Um, but that, I don't really use anything in place of that anymore. I find I don't need it. Um, I'm doing cobalt turquoise. And nice. The schminky and the hob one lavender and the, the jeune in um, schminky as well. Um, and so isn't that opaque? Uh, I've never used that color, that yeah, jeune. It is. It is. Um, it's, it's got an opacity to it and it's good for, like, you know, the stereotypical highlights, you know, your white highlights on the shoulders of people and the tops of their heads oh. and the driver riding along in a, in a street scene or something walking along. If you use the jeune, it's got, it's basically, it's basically titanium white with a tiny bit of burnt sienna in it. So it's just really like an off white. Um, it just adds, a, it's a bit, a bit more, a bit more natural looking. Um, but I'd, I use it, uh, I don't use it very much in mixing. It's more for highlights or if I want something that is a, um, a flat grey, like if I'm going for a flat grey sky, for example, mm -hmm. I would mix a little bit of that in with it just because it just deadens it. Well, here, let me, I'm going to flip through some of your paintings so we can take a look yeah. at, and if you have a story or, or a comment yeah. about it, you know, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, sure. And... Um, that one there's Oxford Street, I think, in London. Um, I think around Christmas time they do all these balls and they hang them all, all from the uh, from the, the streets and mm. street lights. Um, that's very messy. Ended up very messy. We don't need to uh, go through each piece in in depth. But what yeah. I thought that it would be really wonderful for people to see this. And what I find, yeah. there we have some of the opaque colors on top of it. And your strokes are very uh, confident. You know, that's what I really like here too. Yeah. And this is very nice and misty. So what would you, did you use the neutral tint back here or? Uh, yep, the neutral would have been part of the, uh, the tree line coming up. The um, and the almost probably straight neutral tint for some of the tree branches. Here you have more transparency yeah. in it and what the red is wonderful. Uh, that one that we had back there that, that you thought was a little messy, you had yeah. some very um, interesting dry brush marks. Well, actually you get yeah. a little bit of that here too. And to get the, how do you get your thin lines here? How are you doing that? Um, with a really small rigger, it's uh, it's kind of strange. Like I don't, like I'm fairly. It goes against. This will sound funny. It kind of contradictory. It goes. It goes against my my kind of nature with painting is just be free and fun and loose with it. Loose painting is is to go absolutely in my book um, personally. But um, a lot of the time for nowadays because I, I always got frustrated with those lines those you know, especially with the um like the lines going across like the power yeah. lines and things. i get frustrated of doing because they're the last thing you do of course in the painting but i get frustrated with having a great painting and you go yep cool really happy with that and then just a wobbly line is just horrible because it's, it's hard to do well, you don't want to draw it on because then it look, it can absolutely ruin it. But I like what you have here. You've got that skip and it looks like you ended up scratching yeah. maybe a little bit of that up here. That's, that's so. right. There's a little bit of it. But once one thing I have done, excuse me, I'll pick it up because I dropped it, is um, these gel pens. Okay, yeah. It's a gel pen. So if you have a look, at, there was a, uh, they're just basically, it's it's a black pen it's nothing it's nothing special it's literally just a, a black pen uh-huh nothing ma magical however it's they're really good for those sort of lines and if you do it quickly like you are doing it with a brush stroke it can't you still get that break broken effect on nice um so i have been using these a lot for those tiny little touches like that um and you know you'll get the, you'll get all the snobs out there talking about pure watercolor and all this kind of stuff and you know it's whatever whatever works for the painting whatever makes that painting work 
no, well, I'm looking at this painting right here. Now, are, are, is that in London or something? Mm, that's why I've got no issues using gouache or anything like that for highlights. Uh, do you do a lot of traveling? Uh, recently, yeah. Um, but the, I used to live in Melbourne for a while. Um, and so I've got lots, a lot of photos, a lot of photos. Um, and this one was from Melbourne. That is uh, a copy of uh, Joseph's book, Beach little exercise that, that mm. he did. I just wanted to muck around with that red umbrella and things. The reds um, are wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's right. They're, they're great. They're all very, I mean, they're getting a little bit cliche and a bit kitsch at the moment, all mm. the, <laughs> the funky red umbrellas, the, thanks to Alvaro. It's hard. So it's all part of finding your own voice and your own style. But you can't do that until you actually develop the technique until you, you know, yeah. it's so, and I like how you handled your background here and your view. What I like, again, I like your confidence and your stroke. So what brush would you be using for this here? That, well, that would be one of those, um, those little sure. mop brushes, the little sword or kind of little synthetic mop. Oh. oh, I got that. That's a synthetic bump? Yeah, it's synthetic. It costs about $3. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it's, it's probably one of my favorite little, um, little brushes every now and then because it, it, it's, it fans out to a lot. Like it's, it's still got a nice belly to it. So it holds Only a lot of energy. But it's, I, um, huh. What's the name of that? Um, it's, the brand is Montmartre, um, which is basically a cheap brand that's sold in news agents and things like that over here. Montmart art. Okay. All and right. Traditional watercolor mop is what it says on the, on the handle. But, um, but no, that the, the confident strokes, it, you kind of have to. Right. Watercolor lends, watercolor lends itself to um, going for it, to just, just go, just get, get, get it done. Otherwise, if you, if you fiddle around with watercolors and, you overwork things and it just it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't lend itself to that. You're probably better off if that's in your nature and that's what you want. I think you'd have better success with another medium because watercolor by its very nature means that you have to be confident. You have to, and you have to be, because you can't, you can't fix as such. You can, but um, as a general rule, I mean, you've got to do those strokes real quick. And, and you get better results and very, yeah. very well said. And you're absolutely right. You know, it's like sometimes people say, Oh, you're so brave. What it is is that you just go for it. You like, I think of every painting as an experiment and you just see what happens and works with it. And like what you did there with your, with your daughter there, where she ended up putting the cerulean blue in your painting yeah. and you just yeah. kind of dealt with it. That's yeah. a beautiful example of it. Yeah, and, that's, that's right. Because it, it doesn't, it doesn't lend itself to being timid. You know, you've got to, you've got to just go for it. And you've got to remember it's only paint. It's only paper. It's only a brush. It's only water. So it's not, they're not Ming dynasty vases we're playing with here. It's just they're paintings. We're creating a piece of art and you've got to go with it. You've just got to have fun. You well, don't want well, for the type of painting that you do here, very loose, colorful, a lot of wet into wet, and then wet on dry too. So how long does it typically take you to do a painting? Um, if I'm working on a, like a quarter sheet, I'll probably like an A3 size, uh, it'll probably be about 40 minutes or so. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. And That's what about a full sheet? Uh, a full sheet, you'd be talking a couple of hours, especially when you're talking drawing times and things right. like that. But if, right. um, as far as actual painting time goes, um, yeah, full sheet, half sheet, you're talking a couple of hours, really. Right. Because you've got that real, you know, you're using more of your body in this when you're doing it. And like yeah. with the type of florals that I do, it's more controlled. You have to wait for a certain little shapes yeah. to dry. So it's just yeah. entirely different. So yeah, absolutely. Beautifully done. And here, and I do love to see how the brush skips across the surface here. So yeah. nice. And then here's yeah. one, of your, one of your demonstrations. Yeah, that was a class that I did um, all around there. There's, um, 
if you were if if you had the ability to pan 360 on that, which, which obviously you don't. Um, I don't know there, about that. I got quite a few pictures here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a um, it's a it's a massive hall that there was uh, the tutors from all over the world in there, and I just had, happened to have my little class, and we're all teaching in that same big massive space. Um, but that was um, fun. That was one. That was night time at one of. Uh, one of the nights there when everyone was in bed and I just went, eh, I was going to go and pay. So <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. We, we don't, we used to have um, spring made up on the east or in the East coast yep. and a lot of artists will get together and we have things up, you know, of course like that too. So here's a good setup of yours. So you use a deep well palette. That's what I can see here. Yep. And let's see, nice large container, and you tape your paper down. So you're using about 140 pound paper. Would that uh, be right? Uh, yep, that's right. 100, 140 pounds. Um, yeah, the life's too short for stretching paper. I think oh. uh, just get onto it. Just use heavier paper, and you'll be fine. But just tape well, it down. And well, see, like I use 300 because for what I wanted, yeah. I want to be able to move it. So. Yep. Have you tried the 300 compared to the 140 in that particular style? And you know what, what? You I, have, I haven't. Um, I, I haven't actually tried. So the 140 pound is a 300 GSM, right? That's the same. I think so. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> the same. Um, yeah, the, um, I haven't tried the, the bigger one but or the, the thicker paper, but I will be soon because I'll need to buy a... A massive roll because I've got a big commission coming up, like a large commission, and yes. um, need to buy a big roll that, that archers do. And I think they end up being, I think, oh, I think they're about three forty pounds or something like that. They're a bit heavier than even still. Um, so I can't wait to try that. But. Did you say you're going to do the archers roll? Yeah, yeah. I it's think I, I think yeah. I just don't. Well, I don't think I can get the Saunders roll. If I could get a Saunders roll, I absolutely would. Mm. But uh, I think the over here, at least the Archer's roll is the one that we've got pretty easy access to. I used to paint, uh, well, I don't, it's just a, you know, I, I'm not going to deal with the framing anymore on that. Like a, I would yeah. do 40 by 60 sheets and make diptychs and triptychs out of them. And just doing smaller paintings has been really rewarding too. I love how you handled this in the background here. Beautifully done. Yeah. A lot of atmosphere. Yeah, that's right. And that's that's watercolor. You know, like that's they're the things you have to exploit in the medium. And as soon as you start to um, let it do its thing, and because it, it's contradiction, watercolor is contradiction all around the place. Because it, at one point you've got to have a plan, uh, but you've got to go with it. Go with it. If if it if it does something, go with it. Don't forget about your plan and all that sort of stuff. But you've got to stick to your vision. Um, you say that with watercolor, you have to stick to your vision. Uh, well, yes, and then no. Uh, right. That's the thing. There's there's so many rules, so to speak. That yes, you stick to your vision, and then and then you've got to go. If something happens when you're painting and it looks great, you've got to go with that. And but but then they'll say, oh, you got to stick to your vision. You got to go with it. And it's like, oh uh, no 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 no, we don't do that. I don't. It's like you know, one of the uh, the biggest obstacles I had when I first started is um, thinking, oh, I don't know the rules. You know, what are the rules? And then it got to the point is who, who are they? Who made up the rules? <laughs> and so just trying to find your own voice. And it's exactly and right. And as soon as you, the things you need to know, uh, what, excuse me, what, what your paper will do exactly. when you put that paint on there. So how wet is it? How much pigments on your brush? All those kind of things, and that that sort of stuff is only you can't really teach it. It's intuitive. You get, and it's only that intuition only kicks in once you've got hundreds, thousands of hours sitting at an easel. You know? True, and I think just being willing to experiment and be free with it, and removing that should I, could I, uh, uh, is really a big deal for a lot of people. The limitations or or the fear of being judged. And, you know, you just got to do it. And like you said, be free with it. So we're just yeah, flipping right. through a lot of your paintings here. And this is really fun. Did you use a spray yeah. bottle to get that um, up there? No, that was just, uh, I think I sprayed it first uh, before I painted. Mm -hmm. But um 
but I just put a massive wash of blue on there and a lot of just up the top, probably about, oh, that's a half sheet painting that one, um, probably about only two inches of just blue right across the top and then just with clean water and that's just what happened when it came down. So beautiful. They're, they're the things you've got to exploit and keep it. If like, like I didn't plan that to happen, but it happened and it looks great. So I've got to keep it. <laughs> so. And the texture that you have here, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I, I am so happy that uh, I had a chance to meet you and see your paintings. Uh, thank and you, appreciate it. It has been such a pleasure to meet you. And I, like I said, I want to stay in contact with you. Absolutely. Your work is outstanding and uh, it was a real treat. So thank you thank so you. much. Uh, thank you very much. For, thank you for having me. And um, yeah, until next time where we can uh, get into some other stuff and uh, yeah. I'll bring the wife in next time. Oh, I'm sure she'll be thrilled. It's like, no, yeah. no, I don't want to get that. So um, we've got your uh, website, TonyWhiteWater.com. Is there anything that you would like to say? Yeah, I mean, my uh, workshop-wise, we're all, it's all sort of booked out. So there's kind of no, no real need to plug anything that's, that's uh, nothing's available for. Um, but the biggest thing is my YouTube channel. Um, really trying to grow my YouTube channel and um, I'm not quite as consistent as I want to be with it yet because yeah, it, I know. As, as, as you would know it takes a lot of work to film things edit change change pooey bums and all that sort of stuff so um, it's uh, yeah a bit, bit of work but my YouTube channel is what I'd really like to um, have people have a squeeze at but I did that and I came across the episode I'm always I've I've had your podcast subscribed to for ages, um, but I didn't realise that, that Jane was on it. So I, I watched that and I listened to a lot of your other stuff as well with um, with Charlie O'Shields from Oh yeah, the Color Group and Doodle Washed and um, yeah, and that's how I kind of found you. And I thought it you know you needed another Australian guest on there because um, we we were lacking. We were, quite frankly, Australia's falling behind in in the Burger O'Connor watercolour podcast representation. <laughs> well, you know, uh, what was funny is that, like I did this, like I told you, I did the podcast. I, I just get super excited about things as, yeah. as you. And, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'll do this. And I have no yeah. idea what I'm doing. I just start doing it. And then, yeah. oh, is anybody listening? And then I start seeing the stats and where everybody is popping up all over the world. And I thought, holy smokes, you know, people yeah. really listen to this. And then I, I, I was trying to make, the, I thought, oh, it'll be a good idea. Let's put the video with the audio. Yeah. I was just happy doing the audio because I didn't know how to put watercolor to, you know, I just didn't know how to yeah. make that cross that bridge. But yeah. then, um, and it was fine. I was pleased. I was having my own little personal party with it. You know, that's all that's important if you make yourself happy and and cause no harm in the wake. And doing a Jane's interview was fascinating. But what's also really interesting, I find a lot of artists like here in the States, when I'll say, hey, let's do a, a podcast or something, they all kind of clam up. They're... Yeah. Either I don't know if they're afraid of giving away secrets or if I mean really you can give everybody all sorts of tools it doesn't mean they're going to do anything that's close and yeah. it also helps people not to feel alone and you know a, a lot of things but then trying to nail people down for an interview and I thought I am not going to go after people that's one thing but the editing takes forever but exactly. I think with what we've done here I love how fluid this is I think we have a lot of, of real stuff in yeah. this and I yeah. I don't know if I need to edit so much you know that's no, all right Live what's and all that's fine that's good I but mean, um it's we're real you know we're real people yeah. so there's no that's right there's no point and there's there's something really lacking in the space of podcasts with with art in general and um, I don't I mean there's a lot of art history things and ah. you know, yeah all that stuff but that's <laughs> I mean, I am not interested. And then, and then we've got we've got the voice, right? We could have the nice little podcasty voice. That's right. That's right. And I, I could uh, I could put on I could put on my radio voice, and yeah, hi, and everybody, welcome. You know, and that's or I could put on my nineteen twenties radio. Welcome, everybody. 
yeah, yeah. So it's um yeah, you've got to be funny and just be silly and you know realize that we're you know we're not curing cancer here. We're just we're just painting, but it's great fun. And you but know, with it, you reach people and people, yeah. you know, because like what you said in the very beginning too, like when we were talking about some other artists or uh, instructors and how everybody can have or a lot of people can have an air about them, an aloofness to them, and. It, you know, somebody that is new coming in can be crushed. It, it doesn't take much because we are all very tender souls. And, you know, I, I, through art, we build our confidence. So yeah, that's right. Exactly right. And, and that's what I love about teaching is seeing someone develop, even if it's over a couple of days, seeing someone just go from their first tender brushstrokes on the first morning to, you know, just letting fly the second day. It's it's great. And uh-huh. and that's that's the thing. And there's it's an interesting subject. It's an interesting approach to take it. And there's some for some reason watercolor has this weird fear factor to it that's developed probably from all the you know, the pure watercolor snobs that talk about, you know, the evils of gouache and all that sort of stuff. And but it's just painting, you know. Like well, you know what you just did there too. Like a lot of people think, oh, if there's a mistake, you can't fix it. Look what your daughter did, and yeah, exactly. look at what you yeah. ended up doing with that. There are ways you can help around. It it may not have worked. I didn't know, but you you can try. You know, and it was beautiful. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> that was beautiful. Happy as Larry. Thank you very very much. Okay, thank you. Take care. You have a wonderful day. I think it's a okay. day, right? You're in the beginning. It of is, yeah, it's. 11.30 a.m. That's it. Ah, oh, my God. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, it's yeah, we're a day ahead. I think it's, yeah, it's Tuesday today. No, it's only 6.30 here. So, my yeah, time. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't need yeah. to whine. I, I no, can stay up well, another hour. Yeah. You don't need to whine. I think you need a whine. <laughs> okay. You take wine. care. Okay. Uh, Bye-bye. Such a pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you enjoyed yourself and learned a lot. And if you'd like more information, you can always visit my website, bergetoconnor.com. Or you could even go to the worldofwatercolorpainting.com. So until next time, have fun and happy painting.